archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. In Sanghol, Ludhiana, Punjab struck upon priceless finds last month. Excavators found a pit containing 65 carved pillars, 35 crossbars, and 13 copings of the Kushan age. All are of Mathura red sandstone, engraved with charming, graceful damsels. These pillars had probably been collected in a pit and covered with soil in the 2nd century BC, and they lay embedded there until early last month. In Punjab, this has become a very important find, and uh, therefore, uh, we don't have much evidence of uh, uh, Buddhist uh, architecture here, and this has been the most important find in the recent past, and the cachet of sculptures which we have found certainly has shot this uh, into prominence. I will certainly like that this sort of uh, work, which is done by a few individuals, I should say a very dedicated few individuals, they should be amply rewarded, and in that direction also the National Museum will try to contribute its share. Punjab is an ancient land, but its ancient past is still in oblivion, save for the casual glimpses obtained through ancient literature and the archaeological investigations. The recent excavations in Sanghol, in the district of Ludhiana, attest the antiquity and the richness of Punjab's heritage. These excavations, besides throwing a flood of light on the historical period, reveal the early stages of human culture and civilization in the proto-historic ages. The Chinese pilgrim Wan Chuang, visiting the land of Kulu To, which is modern Kulu, comes to the country of Shetu Tulo. From Waters' translations, we learn that from Kulu the pilgrim travels south, over a high mountain, and across a great river for about 700 li, and reach the country called Shetu Tulu. This was above 2,000 li in circuit, bounded on the west by a large river, supposed to be the Sutledge, and its capital was 17 or 18 li in circuit. It was an agricultural country, and its inhabitants were in good circumstances and led moral lives, adhering devoutly to Buddhism. In and about the capital were 10 monasteries. About three li to the southeast of the capital, was an Ashoka Tope. Besides it were traces of spots on which the four past Buddhas had sat. The year 1882. General Cunningham, who is the father of Indian archaeology, toured the entire country taking Wan Chuang's book as a guide. He did locate most of the Buddhist pilgrim centers mentioned by the Chinese traveler except one. Had he then seen Sanghol, which is just eight miles from Sirhind, he would have distinguished it as the great Buddhist religious center of the country of Seto Tulu. Excavation started in 1968, when R.S. Bisht surveyed the place for a stupa. They probed a trench for about a meter, when they came across few structures. The plan, of course, was not clear, and after a few years of probing, the project was given up. In 1980, the project was restarted when Ganga Bishan Sharma, formerly of the Indian Air Force, presently with the Archaeological Department in Chandigarh, started the investigation 
for the missing link in Sangol. Punjab's Department of Cultural Affairs, Archaeology and Museums thus struck upon priceless finds. The most important monument unearthed to this site is a Buddhist stupa and a monastery complex. The stupa was laid on Dharam Chakra pattern around the 1st century BC or AD. A casket containing relics and precious stones was deposited in the central portion around which a circular wall was erected. It's possible that the casket was robbed for its broken lid has been discovered. After the pillage, the entire stupa was just reduced to a mound of rubble. Later, the Mahants built a samadhi of Baba Buddhas out of the bricks from the stupa's walls. What you are now seeing is the step which leads the devotee to the main platform of this stupa. And the next portion which you are now seeing is the platform which is a 17 meter square. This is the circumambulatory path or the Pradakshana Patha on which the devotees go around to pay homage to the enshrined one. <coughs> The importance of uh, this particular stupa lies in the fact that this is a Sharirika type 1, that is the corporeal remains of an enlightened one or a devotee is enshrined in this stupa. The importance of this stupa lies in the fact that it is a spoke wheel type and the inner one has 12 spokes, then the middle one is uh, 24 spokes and then the outer one has 32 spokes. This village was thus at one time a town with ten monasteries. But the excavations also provide certain details of the layout of the stupa, which rose on a square platform. Its central portion gave evidence of the remains of an important Buddhist dignitary. The excavators also found in a pit 65 carved pillars, 35 crossbars and 13 copings of the Kushan age. All are of Mathura red sandstone engraved with charming and graceful damsels. These voluptuous beauties are either nude or scantily clad in see-through robes. Snan Sundari, carved on a red spotted sandstone, this beautiful damsel is shown standing on the figure of a lion. She is shown squeezing her long hair with the drops of water dripping into the mouth of a swan. She is ornamented with numerous bangles. She is shown nude. From the balcony, two youthful cups are watching the beauty of the lady. Pakshi Krida, another figure depicting Pakshi Krida with her left arm over the waist. She's cross-legged over a dwarf. Bacchanalian scene. Two figures.
figures, one male and the other female, are shown under the sal tree. The lady is shown in half kneeling position on a cushion in a state of intoxication. The male figure behind her holds her from the shoulders, trying to lift her. A lady plucking flowers. She's standing on a wall and picking flowers with both hands. She's shown from behind. The long braid of her hair is interwoven into locks. A mother and her child. This figure is depicted in the Dugdharani Mudra. The lower part of the pillar is broken. She is fully draped with sari and the ends of the sari are shown suspended on her right side. She is also fully ornamented. These sensuous beauties chiseled on the red sandstone pillars represent the worldly element of life. The models with their girdles and big bosoms are symbolic of physical beauty. On the other hand, the stupa represents eternity. As a bubble-like structure, it must have symbolized with its hemispherical dome, momentary human life and inevitable death. Uh, the people in Punjab have reacted very well to this. It is the, that reaction that we are so proud of and not so much the reaction of the outside people because we have seen after we published these finds, brought them out in the press, that hosts of people have come to see these treasures. Students have cycled down from far off distances, army officers, air force officers uh, and uh, men, women, children of the village and nearby villages have all walked for miles just to come and see this. Apart from that, it has led to a consciousness among the people about the importance of archaeological sites, mo mounds, monuments, seals, coins, and they've all become aware that these are all potentials of great uh, find and historical value. They've, come, they've started approaching us to come and do excavations in their villages. They come to us with seals and coins to see if they are of any importance. Once the people themselves have the uh, consciousness of the importance of history and art and its heritage, half the work of the government is over because the government's main job is to conserve and to project these things for the people. And if they themselves realize that they are the ones who are responsible for all this and not to br build over it, not to break it, not to do any vandalism, then I think most of our work is over and I think Sangol has proved very useful for us in this field. Sangol has proved that uh, art is a common factor of the whole of the country. It's uh, this uh, sculptures that were found here in Sangol are actually Mathura sculptures on the Mathura stone and in the Mathura style, the famous Mathura style of Indian sculpture. These were obviously prepared in Mathura because the stone is not found anywhere in this area and then brought here. Even in those days of very crude transport means, obviously there was enough interaction among the people of the country uh, so that they could move freely up and down the country. And there was obviously great social, cultural, artistic, religious, economic interaction between this whole nation. And this uh, Sangol has proved that once again that India's uh, culture is a composite culture and art is the same all over the country. The government of India proposes to rebuild the stupa around the holy ashes in the traditional style and make it a center of pilgrimage and it would like to congratulate all those who have been involved in the excavation. We were really more than thrilled when we heard about the excavation of Kushana sculptures in all 58 sculptures and accessories, total I understand are 117. I was in Jabalpur when I read about it and my instantaneous reaction was that we must arrange a very important exhibition and we should help 
the Department of Archaeology or Government of Punjab in every possible way. Well, as soon as I saw the photographs, I was very excited and immediately I decided that the National Museum must arrange, arrange an exhibition as early as possible. In all fairness, I felt that this exhibition should be organized in collaboration with the Archaeological Survey of India and the Department of Archaeology of the Government of, Government of Punjab. There are in all about 118 pieces and we intend to choose around 40-45 in the first lot which we will transport, clean them, preserve them and later on uh, exhibit them. We intend to publish a fully illustrated catalogue uh, to record these finds and at the same time uh, hoping that this will uh, spread, this appeal will spread to the country and to the entire country and people will come to Sanghol more often to see what has been achieved here. After the exhibition, these pieces will be returned to uh, Sanghol to the government of uh, Punjab and I understand that they intend to make a museum and towards that end, National Museum will, museum will be very happy to give all kinds of cooperation and all kinds of advice, whatever is needed. we may say, that the relics found here support the view that in the then Sanghol town, the Buddhists of two schools prospered side by side. It was a junction of both traditions, Gandhara and Mathura. Punjab, though it has been in the melting pot of various races and cultures, has a tradition of assimilating diverse elements into the mainstream of the ancient and rich Indian culture. <laughs>